Hi everyone, let's talk about Bruges, which is just another great game from Steffenfeld. If you've seen other videos that I've done, I tend to love most of them anyway. You know, Macau, Castles of Burgundy, Amerigo, Trajan. I know I'm naming games I haven't quite done videos for yet, but they tend to be fantastic. Point salady, lots of a million different combinations and ways to score. And this is this is his take on multi-use cars, which is a really cool system anyway. A really interesting gameplay mechanism where you know you have all of these things that are full of different powers and you can do any of the six actions with any of these cards as long as you have the money or the workers or you're in the right situation to be able to do that action then you can do it fine even if you've rolled terrible on the brown dice that turn you can still use a brown card for one money if you really want to so i say that it kind of occurs to me more that like there's there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of random stuff going on. There's a, there's there's luck of the draw in a game with fewer players. Certainly, if you if you saw towards the end of the playthrough, there is such a huge stack of cards you don't even get to in two players. So, you know, there is luck of the draw in what you need turn by turn. Also, in terms of the game as well, if you're trying to collect a set of people or a set of colors and things, you know, you haven't got that much control over that. You've got two choices of what your thing is. I'm not saying this to be a big negative against the game. I still really enjoy the game, but I'm aware that that is kind of a factor in it. You might really get a load of powers that, you know, get extra extra money when you do the purple dice and other things for when you put purple houses out and things and do all of that early on. It's kind of your own fault for putting all your eggs in one basket, but at the same time, it might just be your luck. You think there's a load of purples, and then it turns out that that was all of them, which happened almost in the playthrough. And also there's the dice as well, but it's I do like the, the push your luck element that the dice add to it, that it's not just the cost of going up this influence track, which is a nice little thing in itself. You know, it, it makes you always want to have some money left over at the end of the round so that you have the opportunity in there or so that you can't give the other person a free pass to just catch up or get in front of you. But the, the threat markers that it gives out as well, that you know you you could be getting potentially five threat markers in a round but everybody gets them and you can only get one of each color per round so even if you know a lot of these things affect you and they hit you more it's kind of your own fault you've let these things come out three times before they hit you so yeah it can be a case of Oh, it's just my luck that uh, the, the, the yellow came out that's going to make everyone lose all of their gold. And it's going to affect me way more than everybody else. And I couldn't draw any yellows this turn, but you could, probably could have spent some yellows on it earlier. And you probably could have spent some money so that you don't have to do them. That's that's another thing. You, you can get some card abilities. Maybe you can get a nice little machine going that uh, we were hoping to get going in the playthrough, but never quite did. Where, you know, you every time you build a canal piece, you can get rid of a threat marker. And so now you're really incentivized to go into the canal for points there, but also to avoid the different disasters that can come out as well. Or you need to be spending actions on doing them. Or one way is to just, okay, it's it's looking likely that I'm going to lose all of my workers. I'll spend all of my workers this round. Or I'm going to make sure that I've only got workers that I'm not as bothered about. I'm not particularly bothered about that color for you know the the actions that I need to activate. I don't need a purple worker in particular. So it's not it's not the end of the world if I lose that one. You can mitigate it in different ways. The majorities is a really nice system as well because it doesn't it, it doesn't force you to do a little bit of everything, but it incentivizes you to do a little bit of everything or to not let someone run away with a particular area of the game. And even even though, you know, once you flipped your majority token, you don't necessarily have to be that bothered about it again. It's like Marty got lucky, got a pet in the first round, flipped over his majority marker, didn't have to care about pets the whole rest of the game. But at the same time, you do stay interested in it because you can stop the other players getting ahead of you. All You don't necessarily need to get ahead, you just need to keep progressing at the same rate, the same way I did on the influence track, to stop them getting ahead, and you've cost them four points, essentially, in doing that. And also in building more canals or getting more people out or going up the influence track, you've helped yourself out loads as well. So that's a really nice little system as well. Yeah, it's got. It's. I could. I could definitely see someone's point if the look of the draw was too much for them. Less so with the dice because yeah, everybody's getting hit the same. Everybody's in the same situation. 
But yeah, I, I, I really love the multi-use card system. There is, uh, there's probably not that many. There's about a hundred and there's about two hundred cards with the expansion, and about fifteen of them are abilities that you know give people your threat markers, take cards from people, steal money from people, things like that. You know, not major take that stuff, but yeah, there there is that uh, slight uh, mean streak in there. It may affect balance and stuff. I've just put them aside, put them behind the tray in the box. We don't play with those cards. Not those kind of players. But yeah, it's it's not that big a thing. If if they come out, they're not majorly disruptive, but they are in there. It's worth knowing that as well. But hey, hopefully the playthrough gave you a good idea of whether you're interested in Bruges or not. I really love it. But yeah, I would say that, wouldn't I? I started off saying that I really like his games. Anyway. I'm done now, aren't I? Go watch the playthrough again. It was really good. Or more Steffenfeld things. Castles of Burgundy's a good one. Watch that. Or Trajan's coming up. Someone use their director vote. Trajan's on the way. I'm going to film that then. <laughs> Bye.